way, um, you know, if you're sick like I am still, or, you know, you have dogs barking in the background or whatever, it mutes it so everybody else doesn't hear that. Um, so hi, my name is Jen Weibel. I am the instructor for this class. I apologize for the terrible lighting. My apartment is really bad. Um, and I also apologize if I start to cough or anything like that. I have um, been sick since last Wednesday, I think. So um, that will help a little bit if I can, um, if I, I have five issues with it. I'm sorry, I got distracted here. Um, if you need to talk to somebody or, or ask questions or something like that when someone else is talking, on the bottom bar, there should be a chat icon. If you are on an iPad or a phone, the icons are arranged all differently and your screens are going to be different than what we're talking about. Um, being that this is a instructional multimedia class, I really wanted you to be able to see the Zoom software. The Zoom software is pretty fantastic in that it's free for 40 minutes. Um, I'm using a paid account right now, so I can go as long as we need to. We've had up to, I think, 22 or 23 people around the world on this platform, and it remained fairly stable. The only thing better that Skype does that I know of is Skype allows you to send a document through the um, system, and this one, as of right now, does not let you send documents. Um, but otherwise, you can record it, you can screen share, you can do all kinds of really great things with it for free, um, and it seems to be a little bit more stable than some of the other platforms, and um, it's not something that's you know, incorporated within the web browser that's a pain in the rear end to get out or anything like that. I've tried Google Hangouts. Um, I don't really like them, but I know a lot of people really do. And I do some work with, um, it's called Virtually Connecting. It's a world um, international group of people that go to a lot of different conferences and then they broadcast pieces of the conference or conversations with people that have spoken because broadcasting sessions, if you're not allowed to, is not a real cool thing to do um, because of the conference fees and that. But they, a lot of times, will nab a really great speaker and then they will set up a virtually connecting hangout and they will um, broadcast that so people can actually speak with the, the big name speakers or people that have attended and get their perspectives and that without being able to attend. So I've used them. Um, I don't know about the rest of you. How about you introduce yourself and you can all answer um, Greg's question, um, which is if have you tried Google Hangouts? So if you want to go ahead and speak and it should drop your picture in the center for everybody to see. And um, you can mute your mic and unmute your, unmute your mic as people go around. So go ahead real quick, 30 second introductions or less. Who is that? Hi everybody, this is Robin Elder and I have not used Google Hangouts. Um, I'm most familiar with Adobe Connect. <laughs> this is like- hey, everyone, I'm go ahead. Adam I'm Adam Dickinson. Uh, I've used Google Hangouts. I don't like it. Uh, I use Blue Jeans for the most part. Uh, Adobe Connect and Blackboard Collaborate. I'm writing down all the new ones that I hear. Hi, I'm uh, Mike Perez. I haven't used uh, Google Hangouts, uh, but I'm sure to use it soon because uh, my my school all uses Google stuff. So. I'm uh, I'm Richard Bruce. I don't know if, you're, if this is working or not, but uh, I've used Google Hangouts. I've used Blue Jeans. I've used Blackboard Collaborate. I feel like Go to Meeting. I don't know. I've used a ton. Well, I haven't introduced myself, Greg Hodges. Uh, I have used Google Hangouts, um, and then I've also used Blackboard Collaborate as well. Who's left? Probably me. Yes, but yeah, I've used I've used all of them actually. Like, well, actually, except Zoom. Zoom's the first time I've used this, but my Google um, Hangouts and the my Google Circles are pretty well developed. <laughs> Was that everyone? Did we hear from Scott?
Mm, maybe, no. I didn't think we had. So Scott, if you hear us and you figure out how to get the sound working, if that's the problem, then you can hop in later on and uh, let us know what you've used. Um, I've actually never heard of blue jeans, so that'll be on my homework tonight to look that up because you guys keep me fresh too. Um, I think that all of them have affordances and that's one of the things that I kind of wanted to talk to you about first because I do say this class is built backwards. I never want you to go into your classroom thinking that, you know, today's technology day and we're going to be doing a PowerPoint and I really don't care the content that you master. I just want you to have tech day um, to build technology in the classroom. And really what I want you to be thinking about this is how does this support some kind of learning? How would this technology be able to really um, give the students something extra that a face-to-face -face is not going to give them or that the no computer, you know, or the technology of a good pen is going to, to not give them. So you want to be looking at the affordances of the technology every week, as well as the um, drawbacks or the, or the detriments that it happens to have. So kind of keep that in mind as we're working through it. I do realize that the class is set up with a backwards pedagogy, because I've got eight weeks to teach you about what I think are eight types of cool tools that you can use in your classroom, and this is my way of getting you to spin up on them. So basically, with introduction to the class, I've built this class, so I really like it a lot, of course. Um, I think that what I like the best about it is seeing what you guys can do with the topics and the um, types of technology that I have you working with every week. Um, because being out of the classroom even just two years, I feel so much of a withdrawal from that because the kids would bring in things every day. I was at high school chemistry physics for 22 years plus the tech integrator, and the kids would be in and they're like, can you get this unblocked? This is fantastic. We've got to use this. And it would really do this and this and this for us. And so being able to um, do that with you guys is something that I really enjoy. So this first week, we are talking a little bit about copyright tonight and also about Padlet. Now, with the copyright, I want to tackle that first. Um, have any, I know some of you have already started to build your products. You've asked me to look at different artifacts, asked if you were finding the right kind of thing. Um, do any of you have questions that you want to ask about the assignment, about copyright in general, or any of those kind of things before we start talking about how it can be used in class and the importance of it and how it fits into life in general? And you can go ahead and unmute and talk, and if you talk over, we'll just kind of PC out until everybody gets a chance to speak. Um, can you hear me now? Uh, as far as that goes, how is, uh, is YouTube a viable source uh, as long as we attribute it to the people that uh, put it, posted it in the first place? Yeah, YouTube is a special kind of um, creature. Um, even if it's marked for educational use, YouTube is still a copyrighted resource unless they tag it with a Creative Commons tag. So any YouTube software that you, or any YouTube videos that you pull are 99% of the time going to be a copyright resource, which is absolutely fine. The nice thing about the YouTube, soft, the YouTube um, videos that you find as well is that the burden isn't necessarily on you if you've not created them. If you are using somebody else's video, the burden is on them for making sure that it's copyright appropriate, but do keep in mind you want to be modeling good things for the students. So you can take a video that you find on there and embed it within your classroom, and if it ends up being, you know, stolen from someone, um, theoretically, from what I've read and what I found out, because somebody asked me last, last semester, was that the lawsuit would go back to the people that created the video and not you for utilizing the resource, assuming that you properly cited it within your parameters of your design. Um, if I find out anything different, I will post that for you, but definitely YouTube resources are fantastic for you. They're one of the best ways for you to get um, different perspectives and different voices into your classroom um, really quickly. You just want to make sure you watch them the whole way through and um, be careful when embedding them that they're not followed up with like um, a Viagra or whatever commercial right after that because that can be a little mortifying whenever if it clicks through on a playlist or something like that and people have you know worked them in so you just kind of want to watch what, what you're doing with that later on we'll figure we'll go through some software that allows you to pull just 
clips of it. You can with YouTube too, but, and embed questions and things like that. So any other questions about the copyright or resources or how to find these things? Oh uh, yes, Jen, I just had a question about like how to find them. I, I found what you told me, I found the Creative Commons um, and went down that list, but I'm just wondering what other way can I find them? Okay, so there's a couple different ways that you can find these resources. Most of the things that you're going to find are going to be copyrighted. They'll have the little C symbol, and that means it's a copyrighted resource. For your project, you need 10 things posted on your Padlet wall. Of those 10, you need four different types of attribution. You have Creative Commons, maybe share alike, maybe a copyrighted something, maybe a no derivations, or maybe just a plain old copy, you know, Creative Commons. So you need four of the five things that are listed, types of copyright or types of, types of attribution. But of your 10, you can have any combination or number of those. So you could have one of three kinds and all the rest of them can be the same one. I just want you to be able to show me that you can distinguish between them. So I'm gonna share screen real quickly here with you and show you what I mean by this because I think that helps a little bit. So let's say that I'm doing a lesson on um, squishy circuits. All right, so I want to find some resources on this. And when I click it into here, I get my computer not wanting to cooperate. And I have all these resources that come up. Okay, so if I go to the squishy circuits, the St. Thomas, and I get this page, okay, it's trademarked. And come on, where is it at? I swear I looked at this earlier and I thought that there was copyright on the bottom of it. Okay, they're not. <laughs> Let's find something else. That'll teach me for assuming that that was the one that I was looking at that had a good example. Um, So we go to a page with this and we scroll down to the bottom, that's usually where it's listed, and we see that there's a copyright 2015 exploratorium. Okay, so what we can do then to find something that is maybe not copyrighted is when you come into this, you can, I'm sorry, my internet here, I'm the only person in my apartment and my internet is being really bad. All right, so we'll go on to here because it should show me. If I go down to the corner and go to advanced search, it allows me to have this page up and I can find whatever it is that I want to look for. Um, and it gives me all these choices. Under usage right in the corner where it says not filtered by license, if you want to click free to use or share, that is usually a Creative Commons license where you can just use it any way you want. Even commercially um, allows you to sell it. Free to share or modify means you can um, make derivations of it, you can make changes to it, and this one you can make changes and then sell it with as long as you're attributing it back. Um, these are not exactly related to the Creative Commons. Um, I mean, it's not CC dash SA, which is share alike, which means shared under the same license or attribution or any of those, but at least gives you a way to um, kind of filter down your results and look for that. So if I were to say, find something that's not Wikipedia. It may have been a bad topic to choose. Okay, a lot of times they're going to say at the bottom then, Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike License, and that tells you what your um, category of, you know, co copyright or Creative Commons is. So that's where you would find that, usually at the bottom in the corner. Um, another way to do it, within the class, I give you um, a link to the Creative Commons
and that allow there's a there should be a link within the class for this. It gives you a link to the information, and then it gives you a link to open in educational resources or OERs, and then they'll have all kinds of information in there that you can use. Um, there's projects and things like that that are associated with this. There's also a page that allows you to sort through different types of it, and I have that linked within the class. Um, so if you really are stuck and you can't find something, shoot me an email, tell me your topic. Usually you just have to broaden your topic a little bit and you can find the resources that you need. And um, let me know and I can help you out um, in finding a few things or at least getting started on that if you need to. But um, a lot of times I'll just type it in and I'll say Creative Commons, um, I'll say CC dash um, SA and, and put in the, the word, the lettering, and then I'll put in the, t the name that I want, and it'll give me some resources that I can use whenever I'm trying to, you know, spin things or whatever. So does anyone else have a question about that? And did that answer your question, first of all, Mike? Yes, yeah, I, I okay. believe so, yeah. I, did, I used TED.com as one of them, so. Yeah, okay. And then does anyone else have a question about finding things, looking for resources, anything like that? I had a question just about like my topic. Yeah. I was thinking about teaching about copyright and Creative Commons and stuff like that in my lesson. Would that be too weird? Like if I wanted to um, teach teachers about copyright? <laughs> Well, you're, you're like the instructional coach or the principal or something like that, right? You have like an administrative kind of role. Yeah. So your life is different than other people's. And I mean, I've had people that are um, dental hygienist instructors and, you know, all kinds of weird backgrounds that didn't necessarily feed real nicely into a classroom lesson. So sure, if that's something that you would be teaching your teachers about, as long as you're not taking all my resources and dittoing them, then um, okay. I'm yeah, I, I know. I, okay, I kind of as I was exploring doing that, I'm like, wait, all my work's already done for me, kind of on this. But it yeah. is something that I feel like our teachers need a reminder, like a refresher on, because mm -hmm. I've definitely seen some of our teachers at our school like bending some of these rules. <laughs> and yeah. as I'm going through this, I'm like, uh, this would be a good topic for me personally, but I didn't know if that'd be okay. Um, as long as you can make it different than what I have, like you could use any of the resources I have. Well, I can uh, find new ones. Yeah, I gotta, you got to find a set of new ones, too. As yeah. long as you can do that, I'm fine. And for the rest of you, um, as you're doing the lessons, make it fit your work context. I hated having to create all kinds of artifacts for my master's program and have them do nothing in my class. So I had to be a two. Ours was like a topic about, I think ours was on like the human heart, and I'm teaching chemistry, and they, they picked this topic. So. Um, Oh my, this is not supposed to be on a free account. This is supposed to be on a paid account. Um, if it looks like we're going to run over time, I will kick you um, a new Zoom link. I am signed in under Mike DeShriver's account. Mike's account is a paid account. So I'm not sure why it's saying it's gonna kick me off. So um, I may have an issue here. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to give me 40 minutes as well and it's, only giving, it's not giving me quite that. Um, so make your topic fit whatever you're working with. And if you have a question, whether it's appropriate or not, then, kick, then send an email to me. And I get usually back to you pretty quickly. If you've not heard from me in 24 hours on email, then email me again because I might have accidentally deleted it on my phone or something. But other than that, I'm usually right back to you, unless I'm sleeping. Um, all right, any other questions on this? Awesome. Okay, so the big question that I have for you about copyright is how many of you have ever really made copyright a big issue in your work environment or in your class? Has it been, you know, whether you're responsible for yourself personally or other people? Um, how many of you have actually made this a subject or topic that you address and hit hard? I mean, I can see some of you saying yes, some of you saying typing in yes. Um, would you like to give us an example of, of how or why you were using it in your classroom, what kind of topic that you were using it for, or how you were um, kind of putting it into there? 
Go ahead, Robin and Dawn, I both said it, saw saying yes. I'm not yeah. sure. I, okay, so I have to because I teach graphic design and the students are, they're not always wanting to create their own design or their own photography or their own, you know, so I've got to teach them how to be able to document properly so that if they want to use it in their portfolio, they can. Yeah, and you're at the college level too. So that adds an extra layer of responsibility. Yeah. I think, whereas somebody that's teaching kindergarten, yeah, I don't know that they're going to be too upset if a kindergartner borrows an image and, you know, you document it, but. Yeah, and I, and I work at the college newspaper teaching them how to do student work, so, yeah. Well, good. How about you, Robin? You said that you've also used this within a, your work context. Sure, and in, in my environment back at Capital One and now at CarMax, um, a lot of marketing departments will use our own logos, but then wrap other similar types of phrases or images that could be misconstrued as another company's or another type of image or a different meaning. So um, we also have to be very careful of how we use and where we place the logos for, in all the training that I create in the internet that I create because it's viewable by um, some of our third-party partners like KPMG or or Fujitsu or other people that we've we've hired to come on board and help us but uh, we can't just arbitrarily use their logos all over the place so it's uh, things like that that I'm I'm aware of myself and the things that I create but that also I help marketing with and I see Adam, Adam posted, if you don't see the chat, if you're not on, if you're on an iPad or a phone, sometimes the chat doesn't show up as well, from what I've been told. Um, he said he's the head of IT for a university, so he has to have these discussions all the time about software and the right dis to distribute. So I think that that's interesting. We've had perspectives from, all, from working within the university as head of an IT department and also um, someone who works in business with this. Um, for those of you in a K-12 setting, um, is this not as big of a deal within your classroom at this time anyway? Uh, speaking as a band director, we use music a lot. Uh, I was, as we went through the copyright, I was reading that as long as you have a original copy to back up, you could make a copy of it for each part. Like mm -hmm. we found out that we pass out original mm -hmm. music, it gets destroyed really quickly and then you've got to buy another whole mm -hmm. piece for $125. But I'm assuming, as I read that correctly, it's okay I make a copy as long as I have an original to back it up for each student. That, so. Yeah, that's what my understanding of it is from music. Um, that Because we had this question at the district that I worked with, um, that as long as you have the original copy, you can make it and distribute to the students that belong to that school district. Um, if you are distributing it, for example, for district band or regional band or something like that, you may need to check into it more carefully because they do not belong to the district that actually purchased it. Yeah. And so the, the, the law may be a little bit more gray there. So we have lots of fun with that. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I don't even want to think about it. Um, anyone else have anything that you've dealt with or worked with, with the copyright? I know like at my school, a lot of teachers want to hand out articles from famous scholars, especially by, I work at a Bible school. So like um, in our theological world or whatever, Bible journals or like mm -hmm. theological journals are really popular. So teachers are always trying to like copy and distribute copyright articles and I have to constantly be like, no, you can't take like something that you got off of Lebronix or off of Logos or wherever you got it from the digital library and just copy it straight to the students. But sometimes it's, they slip by me. So it's a constant battle, I feel like. I think for educational purposes as well, you are allowed to pull um, certain articles and things like that to use as long as they are not like archived and kept and distributed again and again. I think gotcha. you have to be able to go back to the original resource. 
And I think that it can be a portion of like, you can't copy 600 pages of something, but you could copy two pages of a text for them to use in class um, yeah. to, to analyze it or something like that. And Adam posted a question too, something about the same medium, a VHS tape, you can make a VHS backup and not a DVD. I don't know. My tech department made DVDs out of VHSs all the time, but I've never been asked that. So I have it written down. I do write down all the, <laughs> the questions to try and find answers to if I don't know it, but um, I'll have to look into that. Um, our time on the meeting is running low. So I'm going to see if I can get it to let me create another one while we're on here um, so that you don't all get kicked out without a place to go or else we're going to have to wrap up really quickly and now I don't feel like our conversation has been finished. I apologize. Um, it looks like the paid version of this ran out over the weekend and nobody bought the upgrade again from what I can see and it'll come from a department account. I'm not personally going to pay for it. So especially this is not even mine. Um, so I apologize for that. And the next time we will be fixing that. Um, so with that being said, um, how many of you are now going to make changes with how you are implementing copyright into your classroom? Yep. Anybody? I, don't, I mean, as far as the materials I use, I definitely will be, but um, with my students, as far as teaching Spanish, like a foreign language, there's not a lot of, right now, because I teach Spanish one, two, there's not a lot of content creation on their part. It's mostly, um, you know, just practicing at this point, but with the upper levels, there is definitely some talks I need to have with some of my kids. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the other factor is as well, yeah, I'm going to send you this link. Can everybody find, see the chat window at all or no? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I just sent out another link. If everybody wants to click on that and switch to it, this one's going to kick you out. I apologize. This is the way you be flexible with technology in your classroom. <laughs> All right. So if you can click on that link, it'll kick you off of here and go to the new one. And we will continue for maybe 10 minutes on that one. I promise I won't keep you forever and ever. No, go to the other one. Okay. So, and I have to wait until you guys get that. And if I will send it out via email as well. So if you don't get the link before it kicks you out, then I can send it to you. Can you click on it, Mike? Scott? Uh, let's see. Can you find the chat on the left, on the right hand side if you click on the button at the bottom? I'm going to email you the link through your university email as soon as I get logged in on there. Okay? okay. okay.